Okay, so let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and uh, it's great to see all of you again. Today, we have a very interesting topic, fortresses. And I picked this uh, position, which I came across yesterday, and it seems like everyone else has also seen this position. And that's great, so that you can see that the idea of fortresses is really important in practical play. So I don't even know who should I pick here to, to tell me how to save black here. Um, anybody thinks that uh, they have a clear understanding of this endgame? What should Vatsher have played here? Anyone? A lot of people are telling me the right move, but um, can anybody explain this? Ryo Chen, okay, Ryo, we will call you. Ryo Chen, please share with us, Ryo, what is this endgame about? How to save Black here? Hello, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was actually watching this game and then, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you how to draw, but, and, the, and in, earlier in the game, he played h4, and then I was thinking, why not rook d6, knight if I rook d6? And then I was watching that he played h4, and I was like, that, and then Ogar was also like that, okay. Uh, the the drawing idea is knight g seven. Okay. Um, because right now all h five g five f five e five e five e six e eight all of the swords are controlled except for e seven. But e, but by the time he gets there, he's I can start checking him, and then he will not be able to deal damage to people. Exactly, exactly. You're completely right, uh, Ryu. I think. Uh, the same thing uh, uh, that you do. We, in this way, we keep control of a lot of squares. In the first place, we're avoiding the white king to reach h5. Uh, those of you who saw the game, uh, well, we will come to that very soon. You saw that actually, that was the way in which white managed to win this game by entering with a king. But uh, okay, I also think that Vacher, he had his reasons not to play knight e7. For sure, he, he considered it. But in the game, finally, he opted for Knight h6. We can see very quickly how the game went. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is very complex, but let's see what happens here. Uh, so about this point, I think already Caruana is uh, considering the idea of bringing his king to h5. But of course, if, if we go now, the king might perhaps go back uh, to g6. So here there is king f4, and then the king gets back, preventing king h5. King f3, king f7, and so on. And later on, we reached a key moment. Here, I think, again, there was a chance to use Ryo's idea. We could have played here knight c7 so that the knight would reach the key square on g7. However, that didn't happen. Black played knight e7. And here, just for the record, this is how the game went. Finally, uh, let's see here. Finally, the white king was able to enter. Now, at this point, you can see that he's cutting off the Black Knight. Also, for this reason, it's useful to understand that we should not play g4, for example, in this uh, endgame. We should keep the pawn on g2 because it gives us more flexibility. For example, we can use the g3 square with the rook. And also, we avoid exposure uh, of that pawn. So that's how the game went. And here, finally, there was king g4. Key move, the king is coming to h5. And here it is where we would have needed badly to have a knight on g7, like Rai was saying. So if king g6, simply king h4, and the black king must let the white king reach h5 next turn. So in the game, knight e7, and then finally the king entered, and now the fortress has been taken, so to speak. Now, only now, uh, Caruana moves the g-pawn forward when he knows that uh, he's already about to win this game. So the king cannot go back to f7 because then we have g5. So there is no way in which black can prevent really the move king g6 here. In the game that was king e5 and king g6, black resigned because he's going to lose that pawn very soon. Okay, now back to the initial position. Rai was saying knight g7. And I tried myself to figure out how would this be a draw. So my guess is that white would try to uh, bring the rook to, let's say, far away from the knight, avoiding any forks, 
And later on, White's only chance would be to, to like Rai was saying, the square on E7 is not colored. So this was, was what I thought, something like this. And the key idea for Black is to attack the pawn on G2 as soon as White gets too far away with his king. So for example, if king D7 trying to improve the king, now we could actually send our knight to attack that pawn. And once we manage to attack it, once we can go back with the knight, and as you can see, we can later on use our king in, uh, in aggressive fashion. So I guess this is what would have happened perhaps. So king, uh, rook a7 also, uh, oh, Zoe says, what if king f3 instead of king d7? Well, let me just finish off this uh, line and, and then we, we will have a look. Please uh, remind me of this. So again, white is trying to take the fortress. As you can see, the king has managed to approach the pawn but in a different way and that in the game. So now it's already time for black to attack the pawn. So now we should use the knight in an aggressive fashion. So here I almost thought that we could play something like knight h4, but actually that's a huge uh, blunder here to play knight h4. Uh, it's a bad move because white could play rook a8. Funny tactic and we cannot take the pawn due to rook uh, g8. And so the rook is coming here in the back. So it's better to play knight e4 first driving away the white king and then go back. And here it seems to me that uh, white is not able to progress. We have the same idea of attacking the pawn. So I guess maybe this was the part which, which was not so easy to see during the game. This might explain why uh, in the game we had a different continuation because here, as you can see, black will manage to swap his pawn for the white pawn. So it will be king and rook against king and knight and it should be a draw. So that's uh, more or less how I how I analyze this. And as you can see, we're now very close to swapping that pawn. Just one way to do it might be with f4, and we can then play king f5. And we pick, pick up the pawn in the end. Now, let's see what uh, Zoe was saying. Rook f3 instead of king d7. When is that? Here? No, it's not possible. Uh, rook d7, rook d7. Please guide me, uh, Zoe. When, when would that happen? Uh, I'm at a loss here. Uh, is it earlier, maybe? Here, maybe you mean. Oh, it's still rook a7. Exactly. So you mean rook f3 if we go back with the rook. Uh, good question. Good question. Maybe black would have to play something like, like 96. So I, I mean, uh, while you're not giving me checks, my king will stay here. So you cannot get any closer. So. I mean, I could perhaps continue to give checks. Is, is that so? And I will stay here. And as soon as you go back, I will also go back to my key square on, on G7. Yeah, that's how I understand this, uh, this end game. Maybe there is some better explanation. Uh, I also heard that uh, there was another idea that you could put the knight on, on G5 instead. So perhaps that is also possible. But anyway, I think this is the easiest way to understand this. Fortress. We play knight g5 in order to create a barrier along all these squares. The only square that we have to take care of is e7, but when the white king goes there, then we are ready to attack the pawn with our king and knight. Okay, so a few, a few observations here, a few observations. Let me see if we replace the knight with a bishop. What do you think? Would uh, black make a draw here, or you think white would win this? Uh, please uh, answer me to the chat. You can just send me uh, your opinion to the chat. Maybe you can give me some idea for black. OK, I can give you for this one minute, because either you know it or you don't. So one minute, can black save this? And uh, what should he play? Okay, here I didn't get uh, that much feedback as on the last one. Okay, Austin, we will uh, listen to you. Also, uh, we had a few, Angela also found this one. So Austin, what would you play with black here? Well, uh, here I would play f6 using like a similar uh, idea last time, just uh -huh. like control the king enter squares and just guard the pawn with your king. Sure. So let's say I, I approach my king. Um, 
It doesn't matter really, does it? You don't have to do anything here, I think. King e6, I guess. King e6. Yeah, whatever. King e6, it, it's fine. So, I mean, I can give check. You will come back. I can do anything here, but you can just wait for me. You can just keep the bishop along this uh, this diagonal. And uh, it will be impossible for white to, to win this game. Also, just like in the previous example, if the king goes away too far, we can use our king to to approach the, the pawn. So let's say I play something like, like uh, I mean, you, you play something here, let's say bishop c2. I use my king, maybe something like this. So what would you play here? Oh, Austin, let's check with Austin again. Um, so what do you think, Austin? I would play Time for counterplay, perhaps. King up seven. Exactly. I think that's the right way to go here. So once White is about to to give check on the seventh rank and force us to uh, move away, uh, it's a good moment to to go with the king towards the pawn. So I don't know. Maybe King d six. Now it's time to attack the pawn, right? And here, I guess, we could just approach the king also. And we could simply uh, try to take the pawn by moving our pieces forward. So this is quite an easy draw. You're completely right, uh, Austin. The best move, I think, is f6, because in this way, we keep the pawn on the dark square. And we have the bishop of light square, so it makes a good combination. We definitely shouldn't play f5 here. This would be a horrible move. It would, it would let white enter with, uh, with his pieces, and as you can see, one key idea for white would be just to sack on, on f5, uh, transposing to a one pawn endgame. So f6 is the way to go. The game, this is a game between two strong grandmasters. Uh, the game went like this. White was never even close to doing anything. Like I told you, moving this pawn, usually it, it's not good for, for white. It's, it's rather beneficial for black because it will speed up his counterplay once he's able to bring the king. Uh, so I guess uh, no way that white can win this if king h5, most probably black had prepared here f5, I guess. So he's picking up the pawn. So the game was just, just ended in a draw. So this is why uh, I showed you this example, because it's exactly the same pawn structure as in the previous example. Uh, pawn on f6 against uh, the pawn on g2, just that we are using uh, a bishop instead, and it's perhaps even easier to, to make a draw here, having a bishop. And uh, please notice here one important factor. When we have pawn, pawns on neighboring files, this usually helps the defender. It's good for the defender. It's easier for him to create counterplay. He can use, in this case, the G file for an attack at the pawn. And also there are ideas, of course, with swapping these pawns. So if the white pawn is on g4, and some, somehow we are able to play a5, for example. But now let's see what happens if we put the pawn, I mean, Vachier's pawn. I have uh, put it on, intentionally, I put it on f6. So how do you think this changes matters? Well, I already wrote there, not a fortress. So you already know that white is winning. So I will give you two minutes, and you will send me the way in which white would win this end game. You don't have to send me a single move. You should just send me the plan, the plan to win this, how you think that white would win this end game, uh, where to put uh, each piece and so on. So two minutes, uh, let's flip the world. White, uh, white's winning plan, please. Okay, time's up. I got a lot of nice answers here. A lot of people uh, have understood this uh, end game such as Zoe, Sarvagna, Asis, Sharadia, Austin, Sanjana, and so on. But the uh, fastest one here was uh, Alexander Ratten. So Alex, uh, share with us how to win this endgame with white. Uh, I thought that white could try to push his pawn to f5 to blockade f6 and then attack it with his pieces. OK, so I would play black here. It's actually my turn here. I just copied Vachier's game. And uh, so I will play knight g7. I will try to, to save myself with the same plan as we looked at in the first place. So please tell me your moves and we'll, 
we'll work it out together. Uh, probably F3. Okay. Um, rook d7. Sure. King e4. Okay, I'll put my knight somewhere. Let's let's simply go back. F4. F4. Okay. Uh, I will just stay there. Okay. Um. King f3. Okay. I suggest you, on, on general terms, to move away the rook so that you avoid any uh, any force, right? Yeah. So rook a7. Exactly. That's that should be the the greatest technique here. So okay, I'll just go back. So how can you take this fortress? Um. A five. Sure, I'll go back. Work C five. Aha, losing a tempo. I think we're on on a and good uh, track. Sorry. And then King G four. Yeah. Exactly. So now you kind of put me in Zugzwang. No, this is uh, uncomfortable for for Black. I don't want to play a five because I know that then this pawn will become exposed. So. Uh, I'll just play something else. Let's say King F7. So now you can continue with your plan. Now I'll play Rook C7 first. Oh, no, actually, okay. no, F5. Maybe. F5 is better, right? Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, what is the last part of the plan? Now um, we try to attack the F6 pawn somehow. Okay, but you can only only attack it with a Rook, right? Because I can always defend it. Uh, but there is another idea here for White, which will win the game. And uh, actually, uh, some other students already found this plan, but uh, oh, I'm sure you can, can find it as well. We can take Sorry? the knight with the rook. Exactly. You, you should just prepare to take the knight with the rook. As you know, in the pawn endgame, if we're able to reach uh, d5, d6 with the king, we're winning, since the pawn is already on the fifth rank. So uh, you should just, just prepare that plan. So how to continue? Uh, rook c7 check. Sure. Then king f4. Uh huh. Okay, whatever here. Knight h5, perhaps. King f3. King f3, I go back. King e4. Exactly. So now everybody can see here the big difference. I think also uh, somebody said that uh, with these pawns on the same file, also black has no counterplay. And that's completely right. We, we don't have any counterplay. Let's just finish off this variation. Uh, please continue, Alex. Um. Rook h7, yeah. Okay, it's it's not strictly necessary. I think you can just continue with the plan. Uh, yeah, maybe just king d5. Exactly. So now it's clear what's happening here. White is about to play king e6, and if I go back to g7, then I take. Then you just take exactly, and white is winning. So that's basically it. Uh, excellent work, uh, Alex. So that's it. That's how we can win this endgame. I thought of a different way myself. I actually thought about using the first rank. With a rook, I thought that was also a good idea. So that, uh, yeah, what's the big point actually with, with this? Uh, somehow I, I prevent the king g6 from happening. By the way, don't get deceived by rook takes g7 here. This will not win the game. It will win the black f pawn, but it will not win the game. It's too early to do this. Just for the record, if you play like this, you can already guess what black would play here. Exactly, I can just give up the pawn at some, some moment here. Or if you play perhaps, let's say, first f3, maybe this would be more clever. But uh, I'm sure everybody understands here, I'm just going to give up the pawn at the right moment. Not now, because white would win by opposition. We should play first king e6. And whenever white plays f4, this is a good moment to play f5. So black will make a draw here, unless I made some mistake here. I don't think so. <laughs> So once you want to sacrifice uh, against the knight, make sure first to have your pawn on f5, which is not the case here. So that's why you could play something like this, and then f5, and then we're ready for the sacrifice. Well, basically what Alex was, was doing. So it's clear to everybody that this is not a fortress for the simple reason that the pawns are on the same file. 
which usually almost always helps the attacker in, in probably any end game uh, because like i was saying it's more difficult to create counterplay and also it's much more difficult to swap the pawns for the defender okay now let's uh, get started now we start from where i had planned before i saw Bachir's end game or caravana's uh, great end game yesterday so this is where this lesson lesson was actually about to start so you get here only one minute to find black's best move black to play send me black's best move please and associated idea okay time's up i got a lot of correct answers i'm sorry if i cannot uh, name all of the persons who got it right but uh, zoe was one of them so please zoe uh, what to play with black here i want to play h5 followed by bishop g4 and i'm just going to wait around with my king since your king is stuck by a barrier sure that's completely right uh, i cannot really make progress here let's say i give check what would you do with your king Oh, so he just left. Never mind. Yeah, of course, we shouldn't go back. Then we might get into some trouble. Who knows? It's much better to go to h7. And our next move, uh, we should simply put our bishop on g4, like Zoe was saying. So let's just make a random move here for white. Yeah, whatever. Queen c7, bishop g4. So this kind of position was reached in the game. And uh, Bent Larsen simply agreed to draw. He noticed that there was no possible way of winning this. So in order to understand this fortress, we should look at a few different aspects here. One of them is that we have protected squares for our pieces. So the black bishops can never be attacked. And also the pawns cannot be attacked because they are protected by, by those bishops. At the same time, we can see that white has no dynamics. He cannot push g4 anymore. That's what makes h5 the only good move here. And also important to understand that white cannot create a sutswang here. Of course, the king could get a bit closer, but we will always have at least one square for our king. So you could play something like king h6 and you could put your king on g6 if you like. So no way white can win here. Of course, also it's important to understand just like in, in Caravana's endgame that here black has the kind of perfect barrier. He's taking all these squares from, from the white king. So the white king cannot enter anywhere. So it's a dead draw or whatever you call it. A fortress, I, I think, would be the best name for this kind of position. But please notice some people were saying here, for example, bishop e8 in order to play bishop f7. I'm not completely convinced by that move. I looked at it as well. I think that by pushing g4 at the right moment, white might be able to win this same game. You could play something like queen b4 first in order to disrupt. We should disrupt this plan by playing queen b8. The king must go to f7. And now we're ready to play g4. Well, whatever would happen here, I can assure you that Black's task would be more difficult. Let's say he takes on h4, we could then try to trap the bishop by giving check and playing g5. And here, as you can see, no fortress anymore, because that bishop is too far away from home. It's going to be lost here somehow, in some, some variation like bishop e1 or queen b5 check. So it's very important to play the move h5. Why not king g6, says Asish. Uh, Oh, right here, you mean? Okay, can you play like that? I would say that white is about to, to mate, but maybe there is no mate here. Yeah, maybe, good point. Maybe queen e4, and I'm giving check, you have to go back with the king. Well, that's interesting. Maybe you're right, that's a better try. Okay, Alex says queen takes h7. Yeah, probably that's a, that's a good idea for white. I'm not so sure it's a fortress anymore. Uh, we would have to make a little investigation here. But definitely, I would say, if we compare this position to the position after h5, it's clear that this is much simpler. You can do this uh, basically in, while sleeping. You can defend this fortress. It's very easy. Aha. Uh -huh. So uh, I think this is important to understand. h5, we fix the pawn structure. We create a protected square for our bishop. and white is not able to progress in any possible way. The game was just drawn in this position. Uh, I uh, modified the position a little, but uh, th actually the game went like that, uh, this position occurred. Okay, so everything is 100% clear. Black is 
losing by three points here, we could say, but still he makes a draw with considerable ease. Please notice also one other important detail. We have one single uh, flank here. Uh, I mean, the battle is limited to one single uh, side of the board. That's very positive for the side, which is trying to create a fortress. If there would be more pawns, let's say on the queen side, of course, that would favor white very much. It's much more difficult to maintain a fortress if there are pawns on both sides of the board. Okay, let's move on. Here I have a new little challenge for you. You're playing here with the black pieces. I would like to know which is black's best move and what's your idea here. Two minutes. Okay, time's up. We had several good answers here. Uh, it's hard to keep track of all of them, but for example, uh, Angela found this one, uh, Ellie, Aryan, Asish, Alexander, and uh, more people. <laughs> so Asish, uh, you were the first one, I think. So please uh, shoot, Asish. How would you continue with black here? Oh, I just said B3 to trade off uh, trade off the queen side points. Okay, I'll, uh, I guess I'll take it. Take it. AB3. Uh -huh. And then? I have knight h3. Exactly. The knight must go to the protected square on g5, on g5 right? So let's say I play king c4. You would simply play knight, knight, knight g5. g5. E exactly. And uh, yeah, you're right. No way white can uh, progress here. Okay, thanks, Asis. Great work. The king could get closer, but the knight will always have at least two squares where it can stay. And the white king cannot get any closer. It cannot get any closer. Uh, it can reach uh, e6, uh, threatening to give mating one, but of course the knight will get back. Aha. Uh -huh. So most people found this move, b3. But let me tell you that it's extremely important to play it here. I designed this position so that uh, no other move would work for, for, for black. And I don't think there is any other move. So for example, if you play knight h3 here in order to speed up this plan, white would have a good move here. Uh, anyone, what would you play with white? Well, there are at least two or three different moves. Exactly, Aradia found this one very quickly. King b2, whatever I think, any king move, but it's important to move the king so that if black now offers the trade, of course, white will decline because white wants to have pawns on both flanks. In this way, now white is definitely going to take that pawn. And yeah, the rook will be much stronger than the knight in such kind of battle with pawns on both flanks. So it's very important to play b3 to hurry up the change of pawns, no matter if we lose a pawn. So no other move available here. Uh, you could also try to play king e7, for example, but then again, rook d4, this is a killer move because after b3, white has no intention of taking that pawn. White will just play king b2, of course. And after knight h3, I'm sure that you know what he will play, right? It's important to understand here the logic of the position. Exactly, Sarvagna found this one very quickly, a3, and it's game over. Okay, Zoe is saying, could white play king d7, rook e8, king e8, king is rook e7, king e8? That sounds very interesting. Let's see, how can we get there? Well, we will have to have the king on d6, right? So what would be the plan here, Zoe? How would you arrange this? Rook e7? Okay, rook e7, that's certainly playable. Knight g5, king d7, I will just go back. And what would you like to do now? Oh, in the a takes b3 variation. Oh, sorry. Uh, when is that? Uh, I guess I will have to unmute you so that you can point it out uh, yourself because I, I cannot find it, uh, Zoe. Uh, when was that? a takes b3? It's not here. Okay, never mind. Uh, I think uh, there's no way for black to lose uh, once he swaps the pawn. So why did I put this example? So that you understand very clearly that the side which wants to create a fortress should try to reduce the battle to one single flank. That will help him a lot, especially if it's a knight involved, of course. The knight is very bad when there are two flanks on the board. However, I wanted to show you that in this position that we reached, we, we already concluded that this is a dead row. I just wanted to show you also that if I adjust this position and I put the pawn on h4, as you can see, white would win on the spot. This is not a fortress anymore. 
So it's a very important detail that we have this square available for our knight. So it's very important if you play white, for example, not to hurry to play h5. Probably in this game, white played h5 much earlier or f5. They didn't even think about the fortress at the moment when it was played. But I mean, this is a, an important pattern. If you're attacking in the end game, try to keep a more dynamic pawn structure if possible. OK, let's move on. What's next? Now we are going to talk about um, one of the most typical cases of fortresses, queen versus rook with pawns on the board, obviously. And here I will just give you one minute to see if you can tell me Black's best move and idea. OK, Rayo already found it. Great work, Rayo. Just two seconds. <laughs> so Black to play. Black to play and draw. OK. Let's see if I can type this. OK, time's up. Let's listen to Arian Gutla. Arian, what would you play with Black here? So here you go, rookie one check, followed by rookie six. Okay. The idea is to create a six ring defense against the queen and king. And now the so, king can't really infiltrate. You just need to stop the pawn from going to eight, six. Sure. And uh, what about Tsukswang? I have no chance of putting you in Tsukswang, right? Yeah. Let, let's let's uh, make a try here. I play queen, this, queen d4 check. What would you play? King d7. Yeah, king h7. I play queen g7. Let's just move around the pieces. And now okay. I play king g5. Okay. So what would you play? Well, you have several moves, but. Uh... Sorry? Check, check. Yeah, you can give check, exactly. And if I then try to, let's say, lose a move here, uh, what would you play? I can go to h6. Aha, you can just go to h6. Actually, you can yeah. go to f6 as well. It doesn't matter. However, what is clear here is that, uh, like you're saying, the defense of the sixth rank or whatever, we have two squares here where we can put our rook because our king must stay at g7. Uh, what we must not allow here is the white queen to reach f8. If the white queen reaches the f8 square, we are lost because we won't be able to maintain the fortress anymore. So great work, uh, Aryan. That's an excellent idea. Rookie one, this is a very useful technique. Uh, this appears a lot in practical play, so it's definitely a good idea to keep this idea in mind. Any other move would lose here. Let's say rook f6 is, a, is bad due to queen d4, right? We're actually winning a rook at once. And if you try something else here, let's say something like, like rook h1. I know it's a silly move, but just in order to, to understand this, uh, white could win by some queen maneuvers. And as you can see, there are tactical motives here. If now the king goes back, white can play queen f3. And in this way, we are creating a double attack against the rook and the pawn. So black won't be able to save this. It's already too late. This is not a correct fortress to put the rook in this way. Uh, however, he could not go back with the king because then again, the rook is too far away from home. So white would just pick it up with queen g3. So rook e7 perhaps. And here, as you can see, Finally, we are ready to go h6. We could go h6 here, or we can perhaps give check first and then go h6 and white wins. So very important, the sixth rank. Extremely important to bring a rook this way. OK, so here we have seen that black is able to save himself. Now let's say that we adjust this position uh, slightly. Let's see here. I will make a slight adjustment. Did you see what I did? I moved everything uh, one rank upwards on the board. So what do you think? Fortress or not a fortress? Please give me a variation uh, which shows your point. So I will just give you one minute. Why to play? Let's see if you can take this fortress. OK, time's up. Yeah, several people are saying that this is not a fortress. And uh, Alexander provided a very nice variation. He found one of the two ideas that, uh, that I looked at. So please, Alex, share with us. How would you win here with white? Uh, I thought that h5 is good for white because if king takes h5, there's just queen f7 and that's a win. Uh huh. And if rook takes h5, then queen e8. And for example, after king h6, queen h8, king g6, queen g8, check, 
king h6, king queen f7. I think uh -huh. that one. Actually, you could have played queen f7 straight away, but it doesn't matter. Exactly. Oh, yeah, is, yeah. No, and it doesn't matter. This is the way to, to win here. Okay, I could try here to play rook f5, but of course, you have no reason to take that uh, rook. You can just move away your king. And uh, well, it, you're not, uh, I mean, you're winning, but it's not so easy still, but you will win in the end because uh, now the, f the fortress is not working anymore. The black king must uh, go out, go away, and uh, you can win by Zugzwang later on. So this is a nice way in which you can take the fortress. Um, as we can see here, what uh, Alex has noticed is that he can use the last rank, um, I mean the eighth rank, with a queen. That's the big difference. I mean, if, if we compare with the previous example, we can see that um, this would never work after rookie one, king f5, rookie six, h6. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. We just take, there is no queen e9 check, so to speak. So this is just going to be a draw. However, here we can give check on e8, and that's the way we can win. But actually, there is an even, even simpler way to win here. Uh, we can play here queen g4 check. And the thing is that now the king must stay on the h file, else the pawn could run. So uh, let's say we play here king h6, we could go queen g8. So it's similar to, to uh, Alex's variation, but the pawn is still on the board. And if king h7, now we're ready to hit, uh, to, to advance the, the past pawn. And this is no longer a fortress because we can then pick up the f6, f6 pawn. It cannot be defended anymore, as you can see. If king h6, we could just go queen f7. Very similar to Alex's variation, just that we still have the pawn, which should evidently be much better for us because we can, for example, uh, we can use the g6 square with our queen, for example. So black is just dead lost here. Rook g7, queen f5, and we pick, pick up the pawn and we win. So definitely, this is not a fortress. From this, you can also conclude that the move f6 must always be a bad idea in such positions. We should always keep the pawn uh, as uh, further back as possible uh, in order not to give the queen too much space to, to work on, okay? So let's make another little adjustment to, to this position. Let's say we move the positions a bit to the right. As you can see, I moved everything uh, one file uh, to the right here. So what do you think? Can this fortress be taken or it's, it's a fortress? One minute, send me a possible way to win if you think that it's a fortress. It's not a fortress. Okay, time's up. We had many correct answers here. Uh, Asish, Zoe, Austin, and uh, Annika and Sarvagna. Sarvagna, I think, was the fastest one. So please, Sarvagna, share with us how would you win this endgame with white? Um, so I said that it's not a fortress because the queen can occupy the h7 square, like via um, queen h8, and then um, to h7, and then help with g6, g7 push. Sure. Let's see if I can just play one move here. Let's say rook e6. So please continue. King of five. Uh-huh, okay. I don't have anything reasonable to do here. Let's say I go back. Queen h7? Exactly. I have to move somewhere and you will simply G6. push g6. Exactly. Okay, thanks, uh, Sarvagna. Excellent work. That's what this is about. White is able to use this additional file in order to uh, improve uh, their attack, so to speak. Uh, there are many ways to win. Actually, another way that you could win, it's like Caruana's game. You could also play king f5 and, and bring the king over, something which is definitely not possible if you have an h pawn, right? So what is clear here, let's move back to black's perspective. What is clear here is that if we look at the first position again, yeah, this is a draw. This is a theoretical draw, provided that black knows that uh, they must put the rook on the sixth rank. However, if we then move the pieces upwards, it's not a draw anymore because white has additional space here. And also, if we move the position uh, to the right, so to speak, white would also win, just like Sarvagna points out, the queen can now use the h file. Okay, let's make another little uh, adjustment to, to this position. Let's say now that we remove the g-pawn. Uh, is this a fortress or it's not a fortress? I will just give you one minute for this one. Fortress 
or not a fortress. And please stop uh, writing in the chat. Uh, this is only for for learning chess. No, uh, let's keep this to to chess matters only. Okay, time's up. Let's listen to Annika. Let's uh, see what Annika has to say about this. Fortress or not a fortress, Annika? Um, so I think that this is a fortress because um, black, I mean, white can try the same queen h8, but then I think black can always move his rook now, uh -huh. um, like to rook g6 or, or something. Uh, you could put it on g6, but in that case, perhaps uh, there might be some dangers, right? I could perhaps play queen h7, so I'm forcing you to surrender the uh, the important sixth rank. So I think you can find a better place for for your rook. Try to find a protected square for your rook. So then um, maybe like rook, um, maybe something that like doesn't allow the check, but it also protects the king. Aha. Uh -huh. Exactly. So you maybe rook, rook f6. Exactly. Is that if f6. queen h7, then king e8, then... I uh -huh. think that you can just um like if he checks again, then I think you can like either move to d7 or just block. Yeah, we should definitely keep our rook on the sixth rank. So the only thing we have to keep in mind here is to don't put our rook uh, on some dangerous place. Just keep uh, the rook on one of these two squares. Protect the squares. There is no way white can uh, reach a tsukspan here. This is a dead draw. Very good information. Now if you're playing some end game. Uh, with the less material, try to swap off the pawns, let's say on the queen side, and try to reach this uh, kind of position. So excellent work, uh, Anika. This is really important stuff. I made another adjustment. You, you, you see what I did here? We had this position, and now I have added a white pawn on f5. So your call, guys. Is this a, a fortress, or it's not a fortress? Please send me your answer to, to, to the chat. Okay, time's up. It got a little more difficult, but most people got this one right. So, Royal Buchanan, please share with us uh, what do you think? Fortress or no fortress? I think it's a fortress because the, if the pawn ever pushes, then you could just take with the rook and it's the same thing. Sure, but let me play here. I, I, I get I get the point. Uh -huh. Let's say I play here queen h8. Where would you put your rook now? Uh, rook f6. Yeah, now you shouldn't do that because this is actually what we looked at in the Caruana endgame. Oh, because oh, he, can, he can take. Exactly, he can take. Now this is the same thing as we as we saw in that endgame. Since the pawn has reached the fifth rank, uh, white will always win here. So uh, let's see again, uh, Royal, what should we do with that rook? Look, um, maybe. Like rook, uh, rook, rook a6 is? Uh -huh. Rook a6 or rook b6. Uh, I think both of them are possible. For some reason, I like more rook b6. Uh, why might that be? No idea, really. I think your move is, is just as fine. Uh -huh. So this is not a protected square. That's why this is a more difficult fortress. Rook uh, a6 is definitely not a uh, protected square. If the white queen was able to, to reach c4, for example, white would win. But I don't think that's possible. So you can give check here. We will go back. Uh, white can play whatever, and we will try to bring our rook back. So, uh, oh, oh, I think I just made a blunder here, right? <laughs> I stepped into this myself. So please be careful. Don't repeat my mistake. Uh, where should we put the rook uh, royal after queen h3? What would you do with that rook? Which is the oh. safest square? Rook d6. Exactly, because here it, it doesn't matter if white is able to somehow sack on d6, it doesn't matter. We will always draw. It's, in, it's better to use the d6 square. So I don't think white is able to, to win here, really. Uh, this is going to be a draw. No way he can he can take the fortress. But it's, it's important uh, not to put the rook on f6 whenever white is able to sacrifice on f6. So excellent work, uh, Royal. This okay. is another fortress, despite the fact that we're actually losing by four points, you could say. Uh, no way white can take this this fortress. Um, oh, some people were talking about queen e6, but that's not going to work ever, will it? I mean, even black, I think he will win a pawn here. <laughs> okay, it will be a draw anyway, but it's not going to work, queen e6. 
But those of you who are thinking about these ideas, let me tell you that later on, we will come across this uh, idea, only not in this situation. So let's continue. Let's see this from White's perspective. We have a very similar position, uh, but this time, what could we say about this position? Um, it's similar to the previous one, but White is much more actively placed and uh, he can actually take this fortress. White can, can win here. So I will give you two minutes and uh, I would like you to just uh, create a plan for White. You don't have to give uh, specific moves, but uh, tell me where to put which piece to see if we can take the fortress. So two minutes, please specify White's winning plan here. Okay. Time's up. Uh, this was a more difficult one. I can see that it's getting more and more complex. Let's uh, listen to Aradia Panda. I think Aradia is on a good way here. How would you play here? Yeah, I wasn't totally sure, but like I was thinking, like um, if we trade off the pawns, we're probably gonna be um, like, uh, like okay, it's getting really hard, but um, if we play like pretty good, we'll um, win. Um, so, but then. Um, I was thinking like, I was thinking two moves first, like maybe like try to like, because rook h6 is probably going to come. I was thinking like f4, rook h6, queen e8, um, queen e7, Just one question, uh, Aradia. You did check queen takes h6, did you? you? You checked this possibility. Yeah, I checked this, but like I was, um, maybe there is something, but I'm just thinking king f8 or yeah, that's, I was thinking. Exactly. Like, yeah. Aha, uh -huh, and it's a draw. So, I mean, the, the idea is not bad to, to sacrifice, but it doesn't work. So let's uh, stick to your plan. Queen e8, check. Okay, I'll go to h7. Yeah, okay. and then Please I was continue. thinking like king g5, um, like king g5, and try go like f5, queen g6, but like. Okay, let, let's, let's, uh, let's check this. I'll put my rook on f6. Now, like, as you can see, there is no way you can sack, else I would lose here. You can play f5. I'm going to go back. And uh, queen g6, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't uh, make wait. sense. Does queen e6 work? I think it's Aha, true. now you're getting closer. Now you're getting closer. So you can see that Aradia has found the right plan. However, it's it's not executed in the right way because I cannot take and I can go back with oh, the king. Oh, yeah. But now, now that you know what this is about, uh, that's why I was saying to, to, to you that uh, the queen e6 was an uh, interesting idea uh, later. And this is what the moment. I was talking about. Anyway, so if you're going to play queen e6, what should you do with the king here? Where to put the king? On g5 or on e5? What do you think makes most, most sense here? Oh, Aradia is uh, is unmuted. Mute. Yeah, now, now, now that I think of it, I was playing king g5 to stop like rook g6 and like rook h5, but that's already stopped. So king e5 uh -huh. is my idea with f5, queen e6. Sure, so king e5, yeah, I understand what you mean. King g5, I cannot play rook g6, but I can play rook f6, so uh, it's not a big deal. But king e5, exactly. Let's say I now stick to the same plan. Please continue, uh, Aradia. How would you continue here? Oh, okay. Well, Pierre will go f5 and then queen uh -huh. e6. Well, depends on, yeah, now queen e6. Exactly. So yeah. here, two, two things can happen, right, uh, Aradia? Two things can happen. I can take, but then... Yeah, then you just go politics. Also, I think this idea was used like um, <laughs> Nepo, like in the candidates, like first seven rounds, something like that. Really? Was, oh, I, I didn't know that. I, I would have to check it. Okay, Nepo in round seven. It was seven. like you go queen e6 and then like king d6. Really? Well, wow. it was like the other side, but I'm pretty sure that's where it was. <laughs> you're it you're well informed. Else. Anyway, please finish off this variation, uh, Aradia. Please yeah, then just king d6, king d7. And exactly, and, and white wins. So I cannot take uh, the queen there. I cannot take. Also, I cannot play rook f6, right? Uh, it doesn't make sense. So you can just take, I guess. Uh-huh. So no way uh, black can, uh, can save them, themselves here. And you can even consider to, to get closer with the king, if you like. So after king e5, let's say I play something like uh, rook h1 in order to create a threat of rook e1. We could put the queen far away, like we saw in the previous case uh, with rook against knight. It makes sense to 
to move the heavy way far away. So this is a game. I mean, it's a it's a it's an actual game played last year, and uh, I'm just showing you the course of the game. So finally, White played here Queen E6, uh, Aradia's idea, and Black uh, resigned a, a few moves later. They played King H8, and here you could win by by bringing the king closer, but of course, much faster just take on h6 and then uh, bring the king and uh, the pawn will queen. So uh, basically what we have seen here, uh, in order to take this fortress, we have to use the sacrifice. Okay, we already saw this in other examples, but uh, like in the first example, Caruana's uh, rook takes uh, g7, we saw uh, at some occasion. However, here uh, we're talking about sacking the queen for the black rook. So in order to prepare this idea, we should improve our position and put our pawn on f5. And this way, we're preparing to go queen e6. This is the key move, uh, which will win the game for white. And I think if we compare it to the previous case, uh, this was no longer uh, uh, possible to win because as you can see, the pawn is on e7, it's not on g7. So queen e6 would not create a passed pawn for white. That's the big difference here. And that's why white is, unable to, to win this endgame. But he's able to win this endgame because we have this nice idea of bringing the pawn to f5 and then, yeah, queen e6 and, and so on. Aha, okay, uh, what else? I think I have one more left on this topic. Um, yeah, now, I mean, for the fair of, uh, for the for the reason of uh, fairness, we put black with the queen this time. So, Another way in which we can take a fortress apart from sacrificing is by using Sukhswain. So this is not that easy. Also, it's not that difficult. So I'll give you two minutes. And here I want you to give me a concrete variation, how to win with black. If you give me three moves, that's enough. Okay, so two minutes, black to play and win, short variation, like two, three moves. Okay, time's up. Maybe I should have asked Kostya for this one because it was more, more, more difficult than the previous ones and nobody so far got the solution completely. But I think Alexander Wang was, uh, was uh, very close. So Alex, please uh, share with us. How would you continue with Black here? So the first decision is obviously to decide whether you play King G5 and King E5. And I just realized, I think King E5 is a bit better actually. King E5 or King G5? I think King E5 is a bit better. Okay. But King E5. So when I hit the line King G5. Uh, oh, you, you said King G5? Yeah, I said King G5. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I mean, just for the record, everybody understands that the same plan of playing King E5 and bring the queen to uh, E4. I think the problem with King E G5 is that uh, when you're trying to take, I, I guess, I mean, she knows not that much. Yeah. Uh, but okay, let's just say King G5, Rook H4, because that's the only move. If he plays Rook C4, when you check, check in. Uh, wait, 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 Alex, please wait. I'm not going to move away my Rook from so here. Yes, but King G1. Okay, King G1. Exactly. If I move away the Rook, you're going to play Queen F2. This is not good for me. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but if definitely... you play King G1, then. Exactly. Okay, so you cannot take on F4 because unfortunately he will get. Opposition. Opp opposition, exactly. Somebody was suggesting King G4, but you can see that mm -hmm. I won't put my king on F2, of course. I'll just play King G2, so it's a draw anyway. Um, so um, uh, you're right, you're right. May I ask you a question, uh, Alex? If it was white to play here, if it was white's turn, what do you think well, white would, would play? Oh, okay, I can see what the thing is going. Uh-huh. What do you think white would play? Does uh, white have a good move here? If it was white, it's not good. H4 is not good. Because... Aha. This is not good. Uh, definitely going back with the king is not good. What, what? So it looks like it's um, it's what Zug's one. So I guess white can black and play queen. Uh, oh, how do I play <laughs> queen? Let me ask you something, uh, Alex. What do you usually do when you want to lose a tempo in the end game? Uh, I usually do triangulation. Okay, so please, please uh, stick to that concept. Please uh, triangulate now. Please do it. Okay, okay. Zoe also found this plan. Sorry. I to triangulate the king. Oh, I can. 
Wait. I can play this King G6. Exactly. We start with King G6. Now white doesn't have many moves to choose from. We have to play King G1 because there are no good rook moves. Definitely going away with the rook, like we we're saying, this is not yeah, good because queen f2 and the pawn will, will be attacked. And if rook h3, this is a very bad place for the rook. The king can approach and so on. So I will have to play king g1. And what would you play now? Yeah, king g5. Exactly. Now we play king g5. And as and you can see here. King h1 and queen f4. Aha, king h1 fails to queen takes f4. As everybody can see, now it's different because the white king doesn't reach f2. So it's just winning for black. Uh, what else can I play here? If I play king f1, Alex, what would black play? Uh, black just, I guess, plays queen, uh, hmm. I guess he can play, um, well, oh, queen h2, queen h2. Exactly. Now we take the fortress because the king is not taking care of the h2 square anymore. So king f1 is also a bad move. And let's say I play here rook h4. Now, I mean, in the previous line, you could play queen f2, but here you can't. But still, you can use your queen in a clever way. Uh, how would you use your queen here, Alex? Uh, Just to bring it a little closer to the white king. Uh, yeah, queen, maybe. Yeah, queen e1, king g2, please continue. Queen e2, also, yeah. Exactly. Queen f3, okay. And that's the key move, queen f3. So now, white will have to move away the king and uh, what will happen next? Yeah, easy, right? Very easy. You will just go for mate here by queen f2, right? So now the, the fortress has been taken and black wins. Aha, excellent work, uh, Alex. So, uh, well, I was going to ask Alex for the last uh, variation here, if rook f2, but uh, let's see if somebody else can, uh, can figure out what would happen here. So I will give you, I think only one minute for this one. So black to play and win. Please give me a little variation for black here. Okay, I didn't get many right answers here. Uh, Annika is very close. So let's listen to Annika. Please uh, share with us Annika, how to continue with black here. Okay, so um, I thought the first one was um, queen e1 and the only actually good move here is king g2. Sure. And then here, possibly, um, I mean, king g4, I don't think it works because there's just rook f4. Exactly. So we should prepare it, right? What should we play first? So maybe queen e4 and then king g4. Exactly. Excellent. So now queen e4 check. I can play king g1. And now you're ready, right? Yeah. So what would you play? So king g4. King g4. E Exactly. And here you just have to be a little careful. If I play rook f4 check. King x3. Exactly. We don't take on f4, of course. We take on g3 so that we get the opposition next turn, right? Yeah. So this is this is just winning, right? Yeah. So you, you just continue, you take the opposition and you win. Okay, excellent work, uh, Annika. So that's what this is about. Uh, I can show you that even strong players would have some slight difficulty finding the right way here because it looks so natural to play here king g5 like uh, Alex was saying. However, it's not so easy for white to, to progress here like we were saying after king g1. But once you notice that if it was actually white to play again uh, and he doesn't have a good move here, it's very easy to see this idea with king g6 and only then to play uh, king g5. So I would say that endgame theory is full of cases with the uh, Tsuk-Tsuang situations. It's very important to understand this. Whenever you have a trouble with progress, progressing, when you're about to win an endgame, when you're on the stronger side, you should ask yourself the question, what would my opponent play if it was their turn again? And in this way, you can find these little tricks like, like Alex was saying, triangulation here in order to lose the tempo and win the, this, this, uh, take this uh, fortress. So let's see what else I have. Uh, maybe it's time for us for the last example. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that this is something completely different. I just wanted to show you that you can, in fact, create a fortress uh, on two, two flanks. Uh, it's not restricted to one single flank. So please send me White's best move here. I think it's very simple, so I will just give you one minute. White to play and draw. We're two, three pawns down, but we can still make a draw here. 
Okay, time's up. We had a few correct uh, answers here. Uh, Austin, Aradia, and uh, Alexander Rutten. So, Alex, please share with us what to play with white here. Uh, I thought you should play Bishop e7 to trap the knight. Aha, trap the knight. The knight cannot uh, move away. And uh, what about the black king? Um, it can't approach by the top half of the d uh, the d file. And if it tries to do something like king b6, king b5, king a4, king b3, king c3, we'll just stop it. Aha, exactly. That's how the game went. So which uh, white piece will stop the black king? Uh, our king, I think. Exactly, our king. So we should just approach it. So you're completely right. I think it's a funny position because we're actually three pawns down and there are pawns on both flanks, which would usually be bad news for us. But in fact, uh, black cannot progress here. Let's say I play here. Uh, well, it's your move, uh, Alex. What would you play? That's black or? No, it's, it's white to play here. So it's oh, your move. Uh, king d4 or b2. Yeah. Yeah, or king b2, maybe, if, if, you're, if you don't want to, like you were saying, preventing the entrance of the king. Well, you could also go back. I mean, you could just go back if you like. Uh -huh. This is perfectly possible. As we can see here, the bishop is preventing the king from, oh, sorry, the king from going to a3. Anyway, in the game, they play king b2, black run with his pawn, and uh, no way black can uh, <laughs> improve here. Of course, black could give up the pawn, but then, then the, the, the battle gets limited to, to a smaller size of the board, so to speak. So this is how the game went. Let's just look at it very quickly. Finally, Black decides that, uh, that they must give away the pawn. And uh, what would you play now, Alex, in this position? It's not difficult, by the way. So I mean, Black play King c5 because they noticed that if they play here uh, knight f8, uh, White could just play bishop e7 anyway. So the knight is again trapped. So they played king c5. So uh, knight e7, maybe? Yeah, maybe you can play knight e7. I mean, what we should look for here is to swap the knights because then we could sack the bishop for the pawn and we make a draw because this is the uh, light squared bishop, right? So yeah. our main enemy here is the e pawn. So I think you're right. You could play like that. In the game, they simply played bishop e7 and they just kept their uh, bishop on d6. On uh, sorry. The knight on, on g6. But uh, I mean, had black, black played king d5, then we could use your idea. We could play something like knight e7, right? And then we could trade the knight uh, somehow. Well, on f8, definitely, so that it doesn't run away. So I, I hope everybody understands what, what's going on here. We're going to play knight f8, we're going to swap the, the knight, and then we're just going to sack on e3 as soon as black plays. Uh, yeah. As soon as black plays e3, we're just going to take on e3, and this is going to be a draw. So actually, here we come across another topic, uh, theoretical draws. Exactly, Annika says opposite color bishops. Yeah, you're completely right. But sometimes they are winning. Sometimes you can win this uh, opposite color uh, bishops endgame. But here, a very important factor in, in white's favor is that the pawn queens on dark square. So uh, it's a perfect fortress, what we have seen here. Let's say from the beginning, uh, just like Alex is saying, bishop e7, fantastic move. In this way, the bishop controls the whole board, and it's impossible for black to, to progress. Uh, yeah, this kind of situation doesn't come along a lot, but uh, it's certainly useful to, to keep this idea uh, in mind. I think that's it for today, guys. Uh, we will have a second uh, session about uh, fortresses uh, very soon, I think. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone, and uh, see you next time. Stop.